We're here to symbolize the difference that one individual can make. For me, it's this bear. It's the white cremoti or spirit bear, a genetically unique subspecies of the black bear that numbers fewer than 400 and lives in only one small corner of the world, one small corner of Canada's west coast. It's at the, what the, is at the heart of what matters for me, but it's at the heart of what matters for you for a very different reason, because this entire campaign that's been built with youth to try to give this bear a voice is about so much more than this bear. It's about how one bear can ignite the passion in one person and how one person can ignite change for the entire world. For me, my journey began when I was seven years old and I was on a family camping trip. I saw a bear and I wanted to know everything there was to know about bears. When I returned home, I saw a story on the news about Alaska's Kodiak bears and the plans being drawn up to develop their home. In my seven-year-old mind, I thought it was an assault on this same bear and I wanted to do something. And what to do was obvious, have a lemonade stand. Over the course of the summer, I drew pictures of bears and put them on telephone poles and raised some money. I shudder to think how much money my mother spent on buying that lemonade, but by the end, I sent away $60 along with letters to President Bush Sr. and Prime Minister Mulroney. Then I found out the Kodiak bear was saved. And I thought, yes, I saved the Kodiak bear. I didn't, but it planted a seed and taught me the most important lesson that I would ever learn. That one person, no matter what their age, no matter where they live, can make a difference for all life. It was an idea I took with me while growing up, and it was an idea that was further ignited when I discovered the existence of this incredible bear that lived only in my home province of British Columbia, the spirit bear. It started with a high school letter writing campaign. It grew to a global initiative with engaging millions of young people, and ultimately led to letters pouring into the Premier's office in Victoria that culminated in the largest land protection measure in North American history. It didn't quite save the bear, and we knew that we needed to keep going further to look at innovative solutions to this long, stale debate. We came up with ideas like making a major Hollywood animated movie that when released to theaters around the world could give tickets to go back towards protecting this bear, not by conserving its habitat, but by engaging uh, the local communities to help develop their economic potential. But throughout all this, our success in the past and our success in the future and the ultimate fate of this bear lies in the hands of the millions of people who have dared to care, to lend their voice to make a difference for this animal. And I think that's really what this whole issue is a metaphor for, how every single one of us, every single day, makes a difference in our world, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. But every ch decision we make, including the decision to do nothing, shapes our future. And when we choose to do something, to stand up and do simply just write a letter, but make our voice heard on behalf of things that we feel passionately for, we start to chip away and provide new ideas, new thoughts, new perspectives. All of this for the bear has led to millions of young people realizing that this issue is not simply about a bear, but it's about something far greater. It's about creating an undeniable mechanism of hope to remind people that while it may have began with one kid, who was fortunate enough to find his passion at a young age, that the same thing could be duplicated for any type of issue for any person anywhere in the world. It's been an incredible journey for me personally, and I've learned many things. I've learned if you don't ask, you don't get. I've learned to not give up, to not lose hope, that hope is better than fear, that we must find that subtle difference between compromise and balance. We're not just watering down everybody's bottom lines for the sake of efficiency and quickness, but working harder to find asymmetrical and new ways of creating solutions that can create balanced ideas, uphold each other's bottom lines, and find new ways to raise forward in our world. But ultimately, it begins with that one passion. It's what began for me, and it's that seed that must be planted within everybody. We all have that gift of a passion, and we all have that skill set to work from. And through that, we must work to find new ways to shape our world. For me, that's begun with protecting this undeniably irreplaceable bear. But for everyone else out there, it begins with an idea. It begins with a concept, and it begins with a dream. We hear a lot in our society today about young people and how they don't care, how society as a whole is disengaged from policy. I personally don't believe that's true. 
I believe that every single person in today's wired world cares more than ever before because they're more aware of the world around them. But what we're forgetting is, is how we're connected to it. We're realizing that we're losing hope at a rapid rate. And so rather than start something, we just give up because it's just this overwhelming sense of negativity. But we can restore that hope through sharing stories of success, stories like ours with the Spirit Bear and stories like so many others that are sharing around the world, that collectively we can learn from our successes and our failures, break down these old ideological walls, and find new ways to work forward in a post-partisan world where young people can bring their idealism forward where it's not naive, but it's part of an innovative decision-making process. And it doesn't matter whether it's trying to build a skateboard park in your community or trying to rid the world of cancer. There are simply no insignificant endeavors. And every time someone stands up to act to improve the lot of others, we are opening doors, we're broadening horizons, and we're changing lives. To me, of all the challenges we face in the world, it isn't climate change or war or poverty or famine that is the greatest challenge. It is a challenge to convince every single person that, to, that the greatest sin is not trying, but that by trying, anything we dream is possible and our missions are most certainly winnable. Because we are the voices for the poor, the sick, the children, the dreamers, and the bears, I believe trying is our most important endeavor and our greatest tool for a better tomorrow. For me, that begins with saving the spirit bear, and while we have more work to go, I know ultimately we're gonna be able to succeed on its behalf. It's too important for our world to lose, and I hope you share that with me. But I know for each of you, there is that issue that you care passionately about. And that's important, because while there may be six billion problems on Earth, there are six billion of us, each with that passion, each with that skill set. And when we each work to do our part, we start chipping away at these seemingly overwhelming and unstoppable issues and find new solutions. And through that, while we may not be able to assess the impact we're having on our world, we must remember change is never assessed at the individual level. It's when we take a step back and realize it's the sum total of all our acts that will be written in the history of our generation. And if you don't think that's important, let me leave you with one final story that hopefully will. A colleague of mine was a, who works with the Spirit Bear Youth Coalition was a freelance journalist uh, when the U.S. invasion in Iraq happened. She was touring around a suburb in Baghdad, and she met a family. She started talking to them, and she felt an overwhelming sense of hopelessness, like we often do in these situations. And she gave the, all that she had to the boy, which was a poster of the Spirit Bear. She went on to interview the family, and as she was leaving, the little boy came running up to her and handed her a letter to the Premier of British Columbia asking for the bear to be saved. She stopped and looked at him and said, why? Why would you care about a bear a world away from you when there's all this tragedy, a war going on literally in your backyard? And he said, because maybe, just maybe, if I can help a bear a world away, I can learn something about how I can help the world in my backyard. And that's really what the spirit bear is about. That's what all of our issues here are about. It's about our collective. It's about learning from each other. It's about finding new ways and new strengths to create that mechanism of hope that can ripple forward like a stone in a pond and help us share new ideas for creating a better world for all life for generations after generation after generation. Thank you so much.